So we'll notice that the settings that I've shown this far uh, only require changes in XML. In base SharePoint, pretty much the only other changes uh, I could make by just working with the XML is to manipulate the languages that are shown as options. And we saw those right there, and you saw those on the XML. But there's not much more that you can edit at that point with just XML. But there's lots of other changes that you might want to make to the advanced search page. I'm sure you've seen plenty of search pages around the internet that have more advanced search functionality such as drop down boxes and lookup dialog boxes. So a drop down box being something like this, and I don't have a lookup dialog box on this page. And these can be very useful uh, when you go beyond uh, things, when you need to go beyond things just like the property picture, picker. So for example, uh, with dream quality right here, uh, we created, uh, what we've created here forces a user to actually enter a search term. Maybe users don't know the values that would be returned for dream quality. If I type in great, I get results for dream quality. But if I type in amazing, I don't because that's not a property that's been tagged to my documents or not a value for that particular property that's been tagged. So this is an extremely useful or the property picker is an extremely useful unless you have a ton of values for each property and more so your users actually know what those values are. If I have a more limited set of values, it'd be much easier for my users to select them from a drop-down box. If I have a large set of values but still want to provide options, uh, I could provide a lookup dialog box instead. The only problem is that while this is possible to add in base SharePoint, or these features are possible to add, you do need to be a bit more of a developer to create them. You need to be able to build the interfaces in Visual Studio. You need to be able to change the advanced search web parts XSLT to support the new fields. And then you need to edit the XML. And I can tell you that even if I was confident in my ability to, all, to do all of that, I, it would take me about an hour and a half to show you how to actually do it. So advanced customizations like these are one of the most important areas where Ontolica Search uh, comes into play as an add-on to SharePoint and where it can really benefit uh, SharePoint administrators. Uh, many of you watching are currently using Ontolica Search or have used it in a, a past version of SharePoint. Many of you, uh, I, I can uh, guess, were really sold on the point of the many user side interface features, such as uh, the improved refinement capabilities, or uh, the result actions that are available, or um, even the auto suggest functionality, uh, the Google and Amazon style auto suggest functionality, like you can see right here. The use of Ontolica as a tool set to customize search, however, is, is generally something that people initially overlook. Our uh, integration partners that leverage Ontolica for SharePoint search and our clients that have done more advanced uh, settings other than just the, using the default settings know of this a bit better, though. Um, if you haven't used Ontolica search in the past, I definitely encourage you uh, to download a trial at surfray.com and play with the administrative interfaces uh, so that you can find out how you can extend search there. But getting past uh, my, my sales pitch uh, soapbox here, let's look at two very cool advanced uh, search page enhancements that you can make. Um, I'll note that uh, providing uh, users with options for advanced search provides a, uh, a, a more intuitive search experience, and Intala can, can really enhance this. To illustrate this, let's add a drop-down menu for dream length and a lookup dialog box for dream quality properties. Uh, then that dream quality property is what we used in the search restrictions uh, when we were building something in base SharePoint. So just to show you the advanced search page and default Ontolica, here it is, um, just some additional settings that you see here, um, and you can customize these as you want. So we looked at site actions already, so uh, you are going to make uh, any of your changes in Ontolica through a nice graphical user interface. So first things first, you want to go to site actions and then site settings.
In my site settings here, I'm then going to um, click on Ontolica search tabs. And here we'll notice that I have various different levels of my configuration hierarchy. I'll notice the various different tabs on my search center. And in this case, I just want to work with the advanced search page on all sites search. So here I'm just going to click on all sites search. And we'll notice the various different settings that you can work with with Ontolica. For anybody that's watched the Refiner web part uh, uh, webinar we've done, you know uh, a bit about this Refiner properties uh, piece right here. But it, for advanced search, what we're particularly interested in is this searchable properties setting. So by clicking on searchable properties here, I'm actually able to see all the different fields that are available uh, by default on my advanced search page in Ontolica. So what I want to do is add new properties to this. You'll notice that they're broken down into various different uh, types of property restrictions here. So first things, I'm going to add a new property. And we mentioned that we wanted to add a dream length dropdown. So I'm just going to title this dream length. And then I could add a description if I wanted, different names, um, choose the different property groups. But here, just for simplicity's sake, I know that this is already a mapped property that I'm working with. So here's a list of all the various different mapped properties uh, in, my, uh, in my particular environment. And here I'm just going to choose dream length for the dropdown. Notice that I don't have to actually remember what type of property it is or remember the exact name. Ontolica is going to do that all that for me. Because I'm choosing from a list here, I'm just going to skip over this, uh, this choose uh, equals to, not equal to. This is very useful if you're looking to do a free text query field. And if all I was going to do is just create a free text query field, uh, then uh, I'm pretty much done at this point. But I'm going to go just a step further. I'm going to create a drop-down box, kind of like a drop-down box you see here. So I'm actually going to define values for my drop-down box. And dream length only provides a few different values because um, I haven't set a whole lot in my particular environment. I'm just going to add those various different values. Uh, we have three. One's long, one's medium, and one's short dream length. So um, I'm just going to add long here. And I'm going to add medium. And I'm going to add short. And then finally, I'm just going to choose a default value. If, uh, this isn't something you have to do, but I just want to set my default value to all in this particular case. And I can also set an audience targeting, so this feature only shows up to particular audience groups. Uh, but we have a whole webinar all about audience targeting, uh, because setting a feature within a web part for audience targeting is not something that base SharePoint can do. It is something that Ontolic is capable of doing, though. So I'm just going to click OK at this point. And now I've set up my dream length uh, drop down. Instead of jumping all around the place and showing you this on the search center right now, I'm just going to add, for time's sake, uh, my dream quality lookup dialog box at the same time. So I'm going to add a property again, and I'm just going to do uh, dream quality and skip those steps there and drop down to dream quality. And for this particular case here, uh, instead of using user-defined values, I'm actually going to do something a bit more creative. Uh, what I'm going to have Ontolica do is look at a particular column uh, within a document library and pull values from that. So uh, as far as my document libraries go right here, you'll notice that I have various different columns uh, with different metadata in these particular document libraries. Now, Ontolica can't, can't pull everything from every one of these uh, these different columns because a lot of it are, are really user-defined values and not uh, not a bit more static values. Uh, but what Ontolica can do is it can it can pull values from anything uh, where there has been a a, a choice column lookup that's been uh, created. So what that means, uh, for example, uh, with uh, with dream quality, for example, I've actually set various different values that my users can choose from: great, normal, horrible, uh, things like that. And so Ontolica can provide those as a list of different uh, different suggestive um, uh, values for my lookup dialog box. 
And so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to choose uh, that it's going to be a choice column value that I'm working with. And then from here, I'm going to want to choose to specify a particular URL. You'll notice there's a lot of different configuration settings that you're able to make here. So this doesn't have to just be off of a document library here. It could be also off of a list like you, mentioned, like you saw there uh, with that drop down. But here I'm just going to go to my document library and I'm just going to copy that URL and plug it in right here and click load so that Ontolic is able to load it and recognize it. And then from there it's just going to give me an option for the various different columns that uh, that were set up to be multiple choice columns. In this document library I just have this one hence the, the reason it's just giving me that one option there. But once I set that I'm now going to be pulling values from the dream column in this particular document library. By default, it's set that it's going to give me a drop down box, but in this case, let's do a lookup dialog box because there's a few more uh, options that I want to choose. Uh, maybe in my document library, in my column, I have 25 different values that I'm giving my user options for. A lookup dialog box is probably going to be a bit more useful there than uh, a drop down box. In addition, a lookup dialog box is going to allow me to choose multiple values instead of just choosing one value from a list like you would uh, you would see with all these other lookup dialog boxes, I mean these drop down boxes right here. Here I'm just going to set a default value for the all settings and I could do audience targeting again if I wanted to but I'll just leave that alone and press OK. And at this point now I can see that I have both dream length and dream quality uh, as, uh, as options here that should show up on my advanced search page but let's go check it out. Uh, so let's just jump up here and go to Ontolica search and then the advanced search page. And now I'm back on my advanced search page and we'll notice that I have these two new fields that we've added in. Uh, one for dream length and one for dream quality. And if you remember, uh, we actually had these dream lengths that we had specified previously here. So I could actually choose uh, short dreams, for example. And this was a list uh, that we had already created ourselves. And so I can test that out, make sure that that's actually working for me. Uh, short for uh, just that particular dream length. I can actually check and uh, see my previews and everything are working there with Ontolica Preview. And then last thing I can do here is double check that uh, my dream quality lookup is working. So here, and unlike picking from a drop down, I can actually pull up a, uh, dr a lookup dialog box and throw in a couple different uh, options here. And we can search again to make sure that everything's working there. Um, and again, everything uh, looks to be pulling back right. I uh, just haven't processed those uh, PDF previews yet because uh, I just added those. But uh, everything uh, is working completely as expected there. And with that, uh, I'll wrap up our session on customizing the advanced search page in SharePoint. If you haven't had a chance to see how Ontolica Search and Preview can help you improve your SharePoint environment, then I'd be more than happy to provide a guided walkthrough for you. Uh, I'd also be more than happy to help you uh, to set up a trial in your own environment to see how uh, we can help in both, uh, in both search and uh, within your document libraries to improve uh, the, both the visualization of your results and the way that you interact with, uh, with search and document libraries. Uh, since we only had a chance to scratch the surface of Ontolica, I uh, just want to uh, point out some of the key benefits here. Uh, we've already looked at uh, the administrative in, uh, features, but uh, you also might have noticed some of the uh, intelligence-driven search features, uh, the preview capabilities, uh, and even the highlighting within previews. So with that, uh, I'll leave you with my contact information. Again, my name's Josh Noble, and I'm co-author of the book Pro SharePoint 2010 Search. Uh, please make sure to check out our book. Uh, it is currently available on Amazon and through A Press. And also feel free to reach out me to me directly at jno at surfray.com. Hope you've enjoyed our webinar on customizing the advanced search page in SharePoint. And make sure to check out surfray.com for both uh, previous recordings of, uh, of other webinars and uh, information about our upcoming webinars.